project. Uh, my background is a, kind of an unusual one. Um, I'm an art historian and I love to do research, but I'm also a gardener and a cook. I was a chef at a dude ranch for a while. So all my, my uh, interests kind of came together with this, this book. And so here we have Irma here, and what we did with this book is we updated her a little. We always like to say we, Irma's gotten a little work done. So we'll show you the original Irma. And she went from being the trusted gray hair uh, mother figure to this new, uh, more lively uh, character. So we'll get started here. And let's see. We're gonna talk about concept that International Harvester developed, it's called feminary. And uh, Irma, the, the spokesperson, was very involved in feminering the refrigeration and freezing products. So we'll walk through how that happened. So this is the word that they made up for it. And we'll be looking at how they use it. And for those of you who are not familiar, International Harvester had been making uh, commercial grade refrigeration project products for farmers. Uh, cream and all these other things that they took care of. And here we go at the, uh, the new uh, refrigeration division, and this is in 1945, and this is the Evansville Works in Evansville, Indiana. And this is how many people they had employed to get in the market for domestic refrigeration products. And so you see quite a few folks here. And this is from one of the uh, 1946, this is a manager's meeting brochure. And uh, you see all the managers. And can anybody tell me how many women they see in the picture? <laughs> okay, that, that is Ruth Whiting. And she was hired at, to run the home economics department. So she's the director. And what had happened is that women had been working in both government and business as home economists. And this whole movement got started in the late 19th century. Because at that point, if you were a woman and you went to college, you could be a teacher, you could be a nurse. Well, the third option was the home economist. So we'll see. And here we have the ladies uh, in the IH kitchen. Uh, and they were indeed working professionals. Most of them had undergraduate degrees, and some even had graduate degrees in various aspects of food science. And so, this was in 1945, and what, I like this quote. The facility was described as a place where both food and ideas are cooking in the ladylike lab in a bustling factory. So we have our ladylike uh, crew here, and they are researching recipes. They're testing how, pro how to freeze products. And there are also, uh, I'll give you a quote here from one of the, she's not in this picture, but Loris Toole was one of the members of the staff. And she went on through a number of different uh, positions at IH, and, and she was interviewed in the early 70s, just before she died. And so she said, um, they were testing freezing foods, how you froze vegetables, to blanch them before you froze them, and freezing meat in the proper wrapping. So you, th these are all some of their charges here. And here we see the ladies uh, from the team. You can see Mary and Jean and Lois and Ruth. She's in the middle there. And uh, Priscilla, Cobb, and Be Betty. And then we have Doris. And what was kind of interesting about these ladies, and very unusual for the late 40s and early 50s, they were going to one of the company dinners, and not as a guest and not as a spouse. And, and that, to me, was why uh, I thought that Harvester was very innovative, and I think their products reflect this, because, uh, you know, uh, let's see here, Priscilla Cobb. She was a graduate of Penn State College, and she got a Master of Science at Iowa State College. So these are not just your high school graduate ladies. Now this is the original Irma. So you can see how that Irma and this Irma are related, but how they've changed. So the original Irma was drawn by one of the top commercial artists at the time, Hayden Sundblom. 
and he's best known for like the uh, Quaker Oats Man and a few of those other characters. And so they were also referred to as trade characters. But usually they were women. This is 1948, and the model was an employee named Anne Farr, and she was paid $9 to sit for the portrait. And we have the receipt and everything for that. So like Betty Crocker and the other personality characters, they really weren't real people, but real people backed them up. And that was also part of what was so cool about their National Harvester. They personified authority, and they lent a human face to the food corporations. So Irma embodied the values of the American homemaker, who cherished her wisdom, they cherished her wisdom and the convenience that IH operated. So when people wrote to Irma Harding asking questions about freezing or, or refrigerating food, they addressed them to Irma Harding. But it was the ladies you saw dressed up for dinner that would answer back, but they'd signed Irma Harding. And so Irma became the persona for all of these women and several more to come. So in 1947, they were trying to figure out how to use the Irma Harding concept. So here's a model dressed up as the persona of Irma Harding. And one of the things you'll see is the refrigerator door there. You don't see all the little pockets and things that, where you put things down. That was something that was innovated later. So here are some of the publications that they did. Uh, How to Freeze Foods came with your freezer. And it's a spiral valve book. And Irma's wisdom is throughout this. She tells you what to do, she encourages you. So what we did with this book is we found ways to write Irmaisms to put them in the book. So what I used to do with the publisher is I'd take some of the older ones and put mine in there and say, okay, can you figure out which is the, which is the new one? Just so we had a, a taste for that. So um, our friend Loris, she says, 1946, this, a new idea because people didn't know how to freeze foods. So having the pamphlets is a great idea. And so these ladies were creating the pamphlets and testing the information. Well, feminineering was described as one of only a part of Irma's work, but one of her most interesting assignments. Here we see Mae Houston in the center, and she was the chief representative of Irma, the director of the Department of Home Economics there. And we see uh, the engineers Ray Edwards and M. Jara. And it was the department's job to feminine the appliances and confer with the engineers that we see here on how to develop the household appliances from the point of view of the homework, homemaker. Now almost none of the other manufacturers that I've been able to find had this, were doing this. And I had a friend whose uh, mother had worked at Amana and so we interviewed her and everything. So it was kind of nice. So May and her staff, all women, uh, created features like uh, the best humidity control, an experimental vegetable crisper, the design of the pantry door, and a pedal that eliminated fingerprints. You know how it is when you're walking up and you can't get the door open? Well, they, they had a foot pedal. So these were all very uh, unique and, and interesting things. So the, the home economists really spoke from their own experience. And the quote goes on, not from the ivory tower of theory. So there the implication that feminine refrigerators would help save time, oops, we'll get back to this here, uh, would help save time and uh, eliminate some of the drudgery from the chores that the happy housewives were saddled with. So there are ladies here. And it didn't just, it wasn't just uh, in the design aspects of it. Here's May in the factory on the production line spot checking to see that everything is being done the way that they wanted it done. And very unusual at the time, I think early 50s, in the plant, in her, pro her little, you know, proper business suit. So, not only did the home economist create and feminine, they also went out and taught the, the, the potential customers and the dealers uh, how to use the, the, uh, the appliances. So this is in Hopkins, Missouri, and this is the IH dealer, Robert Mooty. And 
And uh, the home economist Mildred calls, we saw Mildred and all dressed up going to the, the dinner. And she's teaching him that even men can learn to freeze food. But the audiences were almost always standing room only. And they were advertised in the paper and they were announced that Irma Harding would be coming to teach you how to freeze food. And I have some great pictures from the archives of standing room only up where women were learning about how to freeze and deal with Christmas treasures. And those pamphlets and the recipes are hysterical. They're just more fun. So this is a typical ad that went into some of the magazines of the time. So here we have groceries galore because it's so big. And they're, they're quoting statistics and you can see all the features that they have there. New low price. And, all, and here's a refrigerator recipe from the team. Oops, sorry. <laughs> but I wanted to show you what I have found on the floor out there. Here's one of the, re one of the ads from that, uh, that series. We'll pass it around. I don't, I think, uh, you know, they, these were in uh, the Saturday Evening Post, Life Magazine, all the top publications at the time. So we'll pass them around and you can see again, here this one has a, a, a bushel and a quarter of uh, unrefrigerated food. So you can see kind of how they're trying to talk to the housewife and the feminine aspect of it. And we see there's Irma up in the top, but that's the, the pride print Irma. So we'll go here. And um, so to further feminize their feminired refrigerators and freezers, the bland appliances were transformed into vibrant decor friendly options. They created ways so that women could take the fabric, maybe from their, uh, their curtains or anything else in the kitchen, and apply them to the door. So here we see, uh, this I think is uh, 1949, and we see our model demonstrating about how easy it is to do this. And I'm so sorry, somebody's messaging me and I can't get it to stop. Mm -hmm. My apologies. Um, All right, so a lot of the customers were receiving the ads and learning about all of this. And so, but really how a lot of people found out about the, the refrigerators and the freezers were through the, what they called the electric circuses. And in, con in conjunction with the federal government, these, uh, the, and the cooperatives, uh, they would put together literally circus tents worth and they'd be many, many dealers, many, many activities. The home economists from the government would come out and they would host cooking contests between the two most well-known men in the community. And the whole idea was around mechanization of the rural life. And here is one of the harvester booths, and this was from the Tennessee Valley Authority's Electrical Exposition, it's called. And we can see that they're feminineered. You can see the type up there. And there's one of their home economists over here in the nice dress. And then we see the customers in their overalls. And here's the dealer, and that way they, people could feel, touch. And they were also given information about how to use, uh, you know, how to use the appliances. So this one's particularly was fun for me to discover because it's, it's, it's an international harvester. And so uh, that one was kind of fun. And, uh, so here's some more ads. The ads kind of speak to that, how they were talking to uh, the women about, you know, you, you can be creative, you can be decorative, you can be do all, all of this. So one of the concepts here was that women dreamed them and the home economists planned them. And this is a 1951 ad, and you can see that the one lady over here is uh, showing that there's a bottle opener on the refrigerator so you don't have to go looking for the bottle opener. And she's so excited that she's telling her friend. And a lot of these ads at the time have friends together, either covering the, uh, the front doors with the fabric or playing with all of this. And I love this new and years, years ahead, they're feminineered. And no, none of the other appliance uh, dealers had those kinds of uh, 
kinds of advertising. They had some nice things. I'm going to go back a minute here. Oh, I'm so sorry. This message messed me all up. Let me get back. Let me go back over here and see what I can find. Uh, Jim? Yeah. Can you help me? Sure. Coco's te text kind of screwed me up. <laughs> so if we can go back a couple of slides, that would be great. I apologize, so we have to go back here. So we had yeah, these la our two ladies here. Then taking that whole idea of color, uh, not just you could not just use the color of the fabric, but you could also have uh, the door handles in color to match. So they're showing the rainbow effect, and this is all part of veneering. So no need to have dull appliances anymore. So they, the, you know, the, the correspondents always said they were empowering women to be creative. So here's another uh, ad for the color keyed kitchen. And there is an advertising photo photograph of this lady in the actual dress. And then they've, they've rendered it into this advertisement. But that is such a funny photo that they were really thinking this through. So color key to your kitchen, and they're feminine. And you can see now all the details in the door, different things that they're uh, kind of innovating with. Here's another one I think is kind of fun. Again, it's that new and years ahead. And it's usually friends. It's not usually, occasionally it's a woman by herself, but it got to be more and more friends. So you're not stuck doing this by yourself. And you can see all the different models. and. Uh, and again, this is the, the smiling women because their refrigerate, refrigerators were new. And over here. Now, they also went a few steps further trying to make this even more glamorous. So we have here this lady in her formal black dress, and she's standing there, she, you know, showing that you can be glamorous. And uh, so we'll go to the next one. Here's, here's the ad, some of the ads and the covers that came after that. So the feminine refrigerators. And the trimatic tri defrosting was kind of a, an early self-defrosting system they were working because certainly no one would want to wear this dress and scrape the eyes out of the freezer. So it's kind of fun to see what they've done. And the idea was that they were bringing creativity, glamour, and adaptability into the domestic space of the kitchen. So here's another one where she's uh, talking on, to her friends about all the innovations. Does, does she remind me of any of the advertising characters of today? Mm -hmm. Flow, maybe? Mm -hmm. For progressive yeah, insurance? Yeah. Yeah. And Flow would do that. <laughs> so you can see that, that those were kind of still some of the images. And here are all the, the publications that they had advertised in. So they didn't want to miss anyone. Oops. Here's another one where they're d dealing with the matching fabrics and the curtains. And uh, it was an exclusive, a sensational fashion first. So this will give you some of the ideas on that. But I just find these so funny. So here's kind of another poster with a lot of those um, Concepts. So we have the uh, doing the refrigerator and the, the what, seven minutes and a yard and three quarters worth of fabric. I'm going to make it easy for us. And then here are some of the innovations: the climate, you know, working to keep foods in prime condition, push button automatic defrosting, the door pedal, the full width freezer. And that was another thing: freezers at that point were this big. They moved them to wall to wall. And you can see our ladies are all here. And that was the decorator refrigerator line. That's what it morphed into. So Irma was very busy. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's another one where we are still, uh, you know, 
Seven models you can decorate to match your kitchen or leave gleaming white. But sadly, IH had courted the farmer's wife with the kitchen refrigerators and the freezers available in all the latest styles of the scene. Irma Harding had feminineered the products and the appliances introduced around 1947 sold for less than 10 years. And that's why uh, it became uh, very evident to the management at IH that they would either need to invest large sums of capital uh, to be competitive with these other lines. And some of these, you know, General Motors, their competition was really huge. The other thing in their marketing that they were doing, they were staying with the tractor dealerships, but Sears had all the other stuff there. And a lot of these small towns, as they grew, it was the same thing. Here was a large, even the hardware store. So they think that's one, in hindsight, might be one of the issues is sticking with that, so maybe a little bit. So here's our plant. And then it gets sold to uh, to Whirlpool, the Whirlpool Corporation in 1955. And so since the time was short, the the uh, refrigerators and freezers are sometimes very rare treasures. And uh, whenever I attend Red Power Roundups, I love hearing the stories of I inherited my grandmother's freezer that's still working or we had a so-and-so's freezer in the basement, we're gonna have to take the house down and get the freezer out because it's so stable. So these are some of the things that I think are really uh, to, the, to the credit of the company and the spirit of Irma Harding and Feminera. And I understand that there are some freezers over in the agriculture uh, building, so if you haven't seen any of them, you know, go over and have a, have a look and you can understand the innovation. So for me, it was the fact that they were taking the women, integrating them into this process, and making unique products, all under the, the spirit of Irma Harding. So if anyone has any questions, let me know. Well, thank you all for coming. And we, uh, I always appreciate having a chance to share Irma with everybody else. We have some cookbooks back here if anybody's interested.